Welcome back to Beauty Boss Millionaire. I'm your host, Felicia Fercasi. And the objective of today's episode is really just to discuss how to multiply this money when you get it to make that million because you can't just get this money and sit on it. You can't get this money and spend it. And you definitely don't want to spend this money and blow it. So we're going to quickly jump into the things that I did to multiply this money that I was making. Like I said, my first store, you know, first I did 100000 that year and then I went up to $350,000 per location. And then I was realizing that I could do this. And if I could duplicate it in different cities, what would happen? So let's first back up to what I did when I would make the money. Obviously, $350,000, you are thinking, boom, you can take that money. But no, that money was used to invest in trainings, to invest in products that make me more money. The only thing I bought for the next few years was things that made my business money. Thank you for tuning in to the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast with Felicia Fricasi. Her mission is to empower you with short, on-the-go business tips and advice to help you successfully start and run your company like a boss. And now, here's your host, Beauty Boss Millionaire, Felicia Fricasi. I became a really strange person when I started to open up my business, and you honestly should too. I became so strange that I didn't even buy anything unless it was going to make me more money. I am serious. I did not spend, I mean, obviously, you know, you have your basic necessities like, okay, food. Okay. You got to pay your bills, like your heat, your water, whatever, you know, like basic shoes, nothing over a certain dollar amount. Like, you know, shoes, don't get crazy. You know, you you shouldn't be paying over a hundred dollars for some shoes if you're running a business. And I'm very strict on that because that money that you may spend, the $700 or $600 or new Yeezys, I love Yeezys, but you know they're expensive and Balenciagas are expensive, Gucci's are expensive, Prada's, Red Bottoms, all that expensive, but it's now depreciating. In a way, people view it like maybe you could technically sell it again, it's appreciating. So you do what you want to do, but I'm telling you, try not to spend your money on things that you don't need and don't buy it unless it's going to make you money. For example, I studied which products made me the most money, like the cash flow. Like I would look at what I paid for it versus what, like I know one main product in my store, but if I notice if I did a twist on it or made it more fancy, the fancier I got, the more I could charge. And that's when I started focusing on just selling that product because that one thing alone, instead of me having a $25 return, I was now getting a $100 return. So I focused on selling that more. And I really honed in on my sales skills. If you're the person in the beginning, you know, uh, there's a woman that works with us. Her She has a business name, Meals by Melissa. And then we have another girl who does design and she uh, she designs like, um, like she does parties. And then we have another lady who does a cleaning service. So the lady with the cleaning service, she might say, you know what, we only do deep clean only you know, or we only do this type of cleaning, which you can charge more for, or we only have a minimum of this much. You know, today I was out jet skiing. And one of the things that they told us is they said, look, we only do a minimum of an hour. We don't do half an hour, even though on the poster, I could see at one point they had a half an hour rental, but they just scratched it off. At this point, they only do hour rentals because they know it makes them more money. So whatever your product or business is, look and see what's making you the most money And repeat that every single time. Even a car salesman. Every car salesman knows to get his hands on a Honda. Because everybody knows a Honda or a Toyota Corolla or something with Toyota is going to last forever. And people are going to buy it. And it's the same exact thing, the trick they do every single time. Because it's going to sell quickly and you're going to make a profit off of it. So just remember to look at your profit margins. Look at what you're spending, even down to your time, versus what you're getting back. You know, if you are one of those people where... You're just happy to have people in your face and making money. You need to stop. You need to sit up here and look and see what is really making you money. Because I go into businesses sometimes and I analyze like, okay, they're selling this to me and they're only making like a $5 profit. I don't really know if they can survive off that. So if you're selling something for too low, either choose to up your prices or add a twist onto it so you can actually make more money off of it. Because some things simply are just not worth your time. So either reinvent it or figure out how to make it better and you know sell it in a better way like for example even if you go to the nail salon you know they may say the full set is 20 but by the time you walk on out of there with all the upsells for example oh do you want coffin oh that's extra five dollars do you want um 
uh, math or shiny, that's an extra five dollars. So now we went from 20 to 25 to now we got the 30. And now, if you want something else, you want rhinestone, you better have that invested product. If you don't have the rhinestones, you can't upsell and charge additional 10 20 dollars for rhinestones per finger. And then, if you have that, now you don't took your profit from 20 all the way up to 120 because you added more stuff. Even those people that are doing the party businesses, the balloons, the little arches, all those things, if you sit up there and create and invest in products and new chairs and new balloons and all these different things and uh, banners, and you have to invest in all those things. But if it's making you money and it's easy to do and easy to set up, you better get doing it. So it's important that you reinvest in your business consistently, constantly, because you want to make sure you have an, a variety. And, you know, I just remember this conversation from an Arab friend of mine. His name is Salam. I'll never forget him. He is one of the baddest, baddest guys that I know that can make a place in the hood lit in regards to selling beauty products. He's really good. And I asked him, I said, Salam, what is your secret to what you're doing? How this guy is like a male version of me. Uh, and I laugh because he says he thinks I'm so great. And in my head, I think he's so great. But he said to me something. I said, well, what is your secret? Because I know what my secret is. I said, well, what's your secret? He said, Felicia, you're never going to believe it. My secret is whatever I do, I do a real big, 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 like big. And I thought about it. What he said, I said, that's funny. He says that because I'm the same way. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it big. But he actually meant in the sense of he makes sure that the store that he makes is so big and has so much inventory, so many products, so many options, so many. You just, you be in his store just shopping literally for like an hour and you only went in there for just two things. But he has so much variety. You'll find yourself looking at magazines, looking at books, looking at having them pull stuff down because he's got the newest of everything. He's, it's like a, a freaking maze of products. So by the time you go in there just plan and spend $20, you're walking off spending two, $300 just because he has so many options of things that you need. So just remember that if you're going to do something in business, do it like my friend Salam. Do it big. Do it real big and have lots of options, options that are going to make you money. Don't just have one option. You know, you go in a place, they got two things for sale. You walk out, right? But if you go in the store and they've got everything is set up nicely, it looks presentable, you know, you got it. It makes you want to, you feel more comfortable. And us ladies all know what I'm talking about. You go into the, the little spot in the hood, they're selling some some beauty products, y'all know, weave, 20 inch, yakky. Next thing you know, you're in there, mm, what's this? What's that? Oh, what's this wig cap? Oh, I need this. And you, and next thing you know, you're spending all this money. And these are the businesses that are successful. So whatever you do, make sure you do it big. And that involves you investing in your product, investing in your business, and not investing in your stomach, going out to eat, chilling, not being the, the person on the block, flashing their money. I hate when people flash money on Instagram. It just drives me nuts because typically the money that they're flashing is all they have to their name. And secondly, if you're flashing money, you basically just asking for someone to come pop you. And I, I hate to say it like that because, you know, but that's really what happened. You know, people die all the time showing off their money on Instagram, telling people, hey, I got money. Don't do that. That's that hood mentality that must stop. That's the poverty mentality. Typically, people that have money, they don't. You don't even know it. They hide it. They hide it in their homes. They got it in accounts overseas, and they're wearing some some beat up Reeboks. They're not wearing the newest stuff because they they're so money conscious. So I'm not saying you should do that because I don't do that. I like to wear nice stuff, but please don't be so flashy that you get yourself killed. Especially if you're living in a certain environment, we're in an ever-changing world. You could literally be in the suburb now. People see something that you, that they like, and they want it so bad that they'll stalk you for days at a time. And next, you know, you don't know why somebody's running up on you. People, are, we're in a cold world. I'm sure y'all noticed this world has changed. I've seen so many mass shootings happen. I've seen all these different things happen. Someone's upset at the job, just goes postal, killing people. It's not worth it. So don't be one of those people that you show off so much. Anyways, let's go back to the lesson. The lesson is invest in your business, not so much in yourself, but invest in your business. There should be times that you, yes, take care of yourself too, but keep a budget on what you're investing in yourself. I never went crazy. To be completely honest with you, my first, I think, two years in business, I didn't want to fail because I knew the statistic was 20% of businesses usually fail within the first year. And after five years, even more have failed. But in three years, they're, they've fallen off. They're not lasting because people get sloppy. And I don't want you to get sloppy. I want you to make a million. I don't want you to just make a million and fizzle out. I want you to make billions. 
and you will become a millionaire. It's very simple. The reason why I say it's simple, it's all a math game. And it's all about observing the cash flow and observing what you're bringing in and what you do with it. I was so scared the first few years in business that I would fail. I didn't even get my nails done. I didn't go on no vacations. The first, it's, it's basically like, you know, college, the first year in college, you know, it's going to suck, but you got you to get through it because you can't even get a car on the campus. It's just like, you know, you're making a lot of sacrifices that first year. Literally, I don't even remember getting my hair done. I don't remember even, I would just do my hair myself. I would do my nails myself or I would just keep them short or just polish them myself at home. I wouldn't go and spend $30, $40 getting a whole full set, $50 every two weeks. You got to get the fill. You already know by the time your monthly budget, you're spending $100 on nails when yet this money could be going towards $100 of advertising for your business. So I'm not saying you have to be cheap, but you kind of got to back up a little bit and be frugal with what you're spending. Up next, I'm going to talk about some of the sacrifices that I've made to stay open and what I did to make this million and also what type of work ethic is needed to be a millionaire and a multi-millionaire. Don't forget to rate, like, share. I need these likes, y'all. It, it makes me encouraged when I get an email saying that someone liked my podcast and they subscribe. Also, follow us on Instagram, Beauty Boss Millionaire. Uh, on my Instagram, Felicia Fricasi. I'm always just posting information and just trying my best to make sure that everyone has what they need to make a million because I really believe that you're going to be a millionaire. Stay tuned. That's it for today. Tune in tomorrow for the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast. And don't forget to follow the Beauty Boss Millionaire, Felicia Fricasi, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Beauty Boss Millionaire.